What's up guys, it's your girl Savvy and we back with another Food for Thought. So look, for today's message, I'm really going to need you to just open your hearts, open your minds, open your ears, your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes so that we can just receive this spiritual word that's here today. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, let's get right into the intro. It's food, it's food, it's food for thought. It's food, it's food, it's food for thought. Okay, today I want to speak about the, the topic that I hear so many men keep talking about, saying that women can't preach. Like, right, guys, where are you getting this from? And that's a rhetorical question because I know that you're getting it from the, the New Testament when Paul said it in a letter to Timothy. But I just want to break this down because... I'm going to tell you what led me to this. So I was on Twitter actually posting something. And there's this guy. He's always posting stuff about um, women can't preach. They need to sit down, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, okay. The same guy that's telling me to do what I'm doing, possibly he, he can't be telling these men that women can't preach and then telling women that they can preach. So I was like, let me figure out where to disconnect this. So I meditated, I pray, you know, I researched the scriptures. I literally looked at what Paul was saying. And I'm not going to lie, when I first looked at it, I got pissed. And I'm like, God, why would he put that in there? But I'm going to give you the points that the Holy Spirit gave me. And I pray that you take this and ask for confirmation because, like I tell you guys all the time, I'm just a messenger. Check yeah. this out. Every believer needs to notice when they first come to Christ. When you say, I received Jesus Christ, Yeshua, into my life, and I believe that he died for my sins, you need to understand that when you read your word, there is majority of the part where the Lord says, this is what I want for my people, and then you have all of the extra stuff that's called culture. And I literally said this in my song, God's Grace. I said, ignore the culture and live by the Bible. Because if we don't ignore our carnal experiences, granted, they will help us to a certain extent because you can't be, you know, so so spiritual that you're no earthly good. You're still a human being. But when it comes to the point that you start placing your opinions alongside of God's word, then that's when you start confusing people. And now you have people who believe in the word, which we're supposed to, and now they're confused because they're saying, hey, this right here is a stamp of approval. This is what was said in the word. This is what goes. But you don't, you know, you don't do your research. So point number one, the Lord said, the Holy Spirit told me, when you read the word, you need to study the culture that the word came from. Yeah, like so for for the um the New Testament. That, that's primarily Greek culture. So you need to know about the Greek culture if you're going to read the New Testament. That's like with Paul and the, and the apostles and everything. If you're going to read the Old Testament, you need to understand the, the culture of the Israelites. So a good example of this, when you read the word study, study culture, I gave you an example about my songs. So yes, I, I fast before I do my music, hands down, because I, I feel that my flesh can be in a place and then I go and do this song then it's going to influence you and I don't even know it you know it's just unknowingly it's going to do that that's why we also have to be careful about the secular music that we listen to because it's going to get in your soul whether they're doing it willingly or unwillingly and that's why it's important too that we walk in righteousness when we do these works unto the Lord just like the people in this Bible you're doing the same thing they're doing but we're gonna to get to that so when you read the word study culture, so like let's say you you um, listen to a song of mine, it, it helps you know bring deliverance, a sense of healing, a sense of peace. It, it draws you closer to Yahweh. That's that's what the Bible does. The whole thing is you're supposed to learn His character, so it draws you closer to Him. So you say you want to be closer to God, okay? So if I if I'm in, if I have a song and I shout out ATL, is Atlanta gonna bring you closer to God? No, we all have our personal experiences. So I heard this um, this African pre uh, male preacher. He said, we got to understand that the word had a lot of misogynistic views. Just the fact that I had this conversation today with a friend. I said, hey, you know that the Lord never allowed them to be polygamous. He, he, didn't, he didn't say that they can have multiple wives. 
Their culture said that they can have multiple wives. They they decided that. I mean, yes, um, Sarah told Abraham to lay down, you know, with his servant so they can have a child. But when you read the word, I mean, granted, we don't know the 100% full story. But when you read the word and let the Holy Spirit tell you, and I just heard the Holy Spirit, Abraham was a faithful man. So he had Sarah. He was faithful. So if Abraham could be faithful, why, why Solomon can't be faithful? Why, why David couldn't be faithful? But they all were pleasing in Yahweh's eyes. So we got to understand that in our imperfections, he still he is still going to use us. In Paul's imperfection, he's still going to be used. And, and Paul literally told us that he had a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what that is. It could have been pride. It could have been his misogynistic views. We don't know. It could have been multiple things. I have multiple things and I'm dealing with it. I want to make sure I'm following the, the leading of the Holy Spirit as I'm doing this. I'm not about to speak anything from my flesh. Okay, this is another point that I want to make. So, when it comes to polygamy. So, if you follow every single thing in the word. And what I mean is, not the stuff that, that the Lord commanded. The things that mankind put in there on their own. The, the ones who sat down, wrote the Bible, and added their own two cents. If you follow that, that means you're going to follow, um, you know, having multiple wives. Do you believe in that? You, you tell me God said... Thou shall not commit adultery. But it's clearly in the Bible that many of these men had had several wives. So you mean to tell me that that don't that don't mix. And I hear a lot of people. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So this is one thing I could never answer people's question about. It was like, man, when I read the Bible, it it it. it it's it's like on one end, it don't make sense. You know, um, he like he may command something, but he allows something else. It ain't that he allowed it. You're getting culture and, and righteousness mixed up. You got to figure out which is which. Because when you're reading, is it, let, let's say for instance, is it Moses said this and Yahweh said this? Or are you reading it that Yahweh said everything in his word? Even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. 